Okay, so today we are flying the CRJ in Microsoft Flight Simulator and we're following a GPS RNAV approach into Hollister Municipal Airfield on the west coast of the USA. We're flying at 5,500 feet and we've got the route programmed in. If we go and have a look at Little Nav Map, you can see we're flying around a route around the airfield just to show the RNAV approach really. So what is a GPS RNAV approach? It basically means you're not using a glide slope, you're not using ILS, so all you have to go on are target heights at waypoints. Okay, and you know about there's a three degree glide slope, in this case from Igrook onwards. So if you look carefully at this plan, you can see each waypoint has a target altitude. So we follow those on the way in by hand. So the plane can fly itself on nav mode and we just manage our altitude down. So that's what RNAV is. RNAV stands for Area Navigation. It's a kind of a shortened abbreviation, but it's the, the, um, the letters, or acronym, sorry, but the acronym letters don't actually match the words. So it's Area Navigation. So you can see, yes, we're in nav mode. We're following our flight plan that I've programmed in to follow the same waypoints as the RNAV approach. And you can see we've got the heights programmed in as well. If you wanted to do this yourself, if you, um, I've actually picked up the approach myself. It was in the database of the CRJ. But if you wanted to, whenever you program a waypoint into the, uh, the flight computer, on the other side, you can put your speed and altitude for that waypoint. So we're looking for 4,100 feet. We're looking for 5,500 actually at WACAM, not 5,000. I programmed that in incorrectly. But we're going to come back now to kind of our approach speed. So let's get the air brakes out. So looking at the chart, you can see here's the actual chart for the approach into Hollister, runway 31. And you can see here are the waypoints. So this is the RNAV approach chart. And here are the heights. So they broadly reflect exactly the same data that we see in Little Nav Map and that we see on the, the approach in the simulator. So we're just coming down on the speed. We want to be 5,400 on the way in. So let's start descending at about the right rate. So vertical speed mode. Oh, we have to set a target altitude first. So let's set our target altitude for zero. And do vertical speed of about 700 feet a minute. Yeah, so 0 0.7 here. And let's see how we get on with that. So we're just coming through. And we can start deploying flaps. We could put the gear out now. Oops, I need to use a different switch to do that. I'm still not used to using a controller that's got all the levers on it to do things. Okay, we're at 160 knots, which is kind of a nice speed to cruise in at. So what we're looking for is to see if we get to our target altitudes at the right. We're going to be a little bit early, aren't we? So maybe we go we should be going faster. So let's just increase the speed. So we're looking for four thousand one hundred feet at Igrook. We'll see. So all we need to do is lessen the rate of descent. It's well it's above four thousand one hundred. If we look out the window in front of us, we can see the light, the beacon from the airfield way out in front. We're still quite a long way out. 4,200. Something keeps flicking in the cockpit. I'm not sure the simulator is altogether happy today. Yeah, so we're a little bit early. So what we're going to do is lessen our rate of descent to 400 feet a minute or even 300 for the moment so we want to be 3,300 feet for the next waypoint I'm going to to correct this along the way I'm going to almost level out 
So let's reduce the range on this so we get to see more about where we are. So we're about 400 feet too low at the moment. Obviously, we, oh, we're looking at the speed. Look, the nose, the pitch has come up. So this just shows you have to be mindful of what you're doing. We can't just focus on the altitude. So I'm just pulling the speed back towards 160 knots. And that's interesting. Look, the um, the altitude is actually raising. So us increasing speed is causing it trouble. The plane has now started to descend gently, but it's probably not enough now, so we can go down at 600 feet a minute, and we'll see how that handles. So, try not to go too fast. So this is an RNAV approach. You're basically watching the numbers and guiding the aircraft down through the, the projected altitudes yourself. And following the waypoints. So this is, this is a specific type of RNAV approach called an RNAV GPS approach, obviously. But you can obviously, at each waypoint, you can look at your rate of descent, see if you're gaining or, or you know, if it's too steep or too shallow, and you can adjust your rate of descent yourself, the vertical speed, and then just balance the throttle. So we're going to go... We ob obviously, we can see distance as well. So you can see the flight management system is automatically selecting the next waypoint each time. So it's gone for Caswe now, 1,700 feet. So it wants us to come down quite a bit more steeply than we are. We're about 200 feet behind schedule at the moment. So let's go down a bit more. In the corner of our eye over here, we can see the airfield coming. Now, because we don't have ILS, we have to obey the 200 foot decision altitude with them um, coming off the autopilot and landing it. You're not allowed to use an autopilot below 200 feet over the ground. Now, this is indicated or above sea level, sorry, altitude. We're looking at this below, sorry, above ground level altitude, which is provided by radar. So we're going to use that as our decision. So at 200 feet above ground, we need to decide if we're going to make it or not. So where are we in terms of this? So 1700, we're still not coming down quite steeply enough. Let's go for the next level of flaps. So I'm, every time I put the nose down more steeply, I'm going for the next level of flaps, which balances it out for the most part. So let's go for full flaps. And down even steep, more steeply. So we're down to... Yeah, but OK. So I'm going to take control. So we've just gone through 1,700 feet, which is where we should be for this part of the flight plan. And from this point in, it's up to us. We typically want about 140 knots on the CRJ. So the autopilot's off, I'm in control. Keeping now on the indicated airspeed. Five hundred. Four hundred. 
Sink rate. Three hundred. Sink rate. Sink rate. Two hundred. Sink rate. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Sink rate. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. So we, on the roll there, we dropped the um, air brakes as well as the flaps and the wheel brakes towards the end, and we went for reverse thrust on the engines. And now we can roll off the runway. And we've got that weird stuttering again. There's something about this airfield that it doesn't like. It was okay flying in. It was absolutely smooth. But now we're on the ground. It's having real problems. So there you go, that was an Arnav approach in Flight Simulator, an Arnav GPS approach. The alternative to that would be just a straightforward Arnav approach where you use VORs but there's no ILS. So hopefully that was helpful and hopefully it showed you, um, you know, what these numbers mean on the chart. So it's basically this is your target altitude for the next waypoint along the way. Um, and if obviously if you pick an RNAV approach in little nav map it's going to show you that although it's not showing at the moment because I've obviously passed through the waypoints but you could see that there were altitude restrictions actually you can see them there look alongside the legs but yeah all an RNAV approach is really about is you managing the descent and not having a glide slope to follow so you're just following the numbers it's pretty straightforward stuff really it's a bit more fun with VOR because then you get the, the VOR to tune for the course of the runway direction. But obviously you don't get a glide slope. So you've got to manage the altitude following the numbers as well as following the VOR. But again, modern autopilot can do that for you. So the modern autopilot can handle your lateral position over the ground and you just manage the descent. But you could see there, through, throughout the route, if I'd been a little bit more prepared, so about 700 feet a minute was about more or less there. It varies obviously on speed, and that's why on some approach charts you get a table of air speeds and descent rates to help you out. Okay, I'm just going, I'm not got ATC, and there's no, uh, no traffic around, so I'm just going to skip across this runway. into the parking area and then we'll start we'll stop recording but yeah it's worth knowing about some of those rules to do with um you don't fly above 250 knots or you, sorry you don't go for any faster than 250 knots below 10,000 feet and you don't use the autopilot below 200 feet above ground level if you don't have ILS fully engaged with a glide slope and auto land. If you haven't got auto land again, you have to switch off at 200 feet. But you can you saw in this instance, I took over a lot earlier than that because I wasn't happy with what the aircraft was doing. It was reacting to the flaps coming down and ballooning around, so I I intervened. Okay. So there you go. I'm going to stop recording there. Hopefully that was fun and I'll do another video again soon.